Kelly Gallagher for Great Britain gets this uh, women's visually impaired super giant slalom competition underway. Smoothest track, early starter. Kelly Gallagher sets the pace. Mum, friends, and family all in the crowd. Ever the gold. This time. So, yeah, so there's only two in the world, mine and Charlotte's, because she's the guide and I'm the athlete. And then a little bit of braille for people. And then this is all textured, it's not just pattern, so it's lovely. And then it's got the same around the outside of it. Oh no, it's the same. Mum, did I not have a really horrific picture of me with like glasses on? <laughs> I found you, Kelly. Oh, I'm so glad you did. <laughs> Finally getting contact lenses, so I was pretty excited about that. So this is the one I don't mind being on display, but uh, this one I tried to ditch, because... Uh... When I was about four years old, then I realised that I, that I was markedly different from other children, um, because in my own home I'd never felt a, a difference. My mum treated me with love and my dad had treated me with encouragement and I was able to do whatever I wanted to do, so I wasn't held back from doing anything. But when I went to school, I kind of figured out that the other... I was surprised to see that the other children could see what the teacher was writing on the board. And I was surprised to find that the other children didn't have difficulty um, when we went out in it to play at break time. And that's probably the only time I've really struggled is at school when, when there's been a difference like that. Because I've never had perfect eyesight, I've never been then able to explain it in terms of comparison. But um, I find it hard now to see to see you interviewing me, or I find it very hard when we're on snow to see anything but Charlotte's fluorescent and orange bib. Um, it's like there's just so much light in my eye that you just want to kind of close it for a bit of a rest. And then I have a lot of difficulty in making out, you know, shapes. I see kind of shapes and blurs and colours rather than, rather than, you know, clear images. It was demonstrated when I was little. My dad had, you know, become the a commercial airline pilot and worked all his life to achieve what he really wanted to do. My family background that had seen my mum and dad working together for some, something that they wanted that encouraged me to be able to pursue what I wanted to do. I applied for jobs as every graduate does. I was lucky to get a job within the Northern Ireland Civil Service as a statistician um, and it was really great and I guess if I think of like other countries in the European Union and around the world. I've been really lucky that in our laws, you know, I'm not discriminated against, even though I have, a, you know, a disability kind of thing with my eyesight. I've been really lucky with that there's assistive technology within the workplace that means that I can work in the same way as everyone else can on a computer and work with very, you know, with numbers and a big data set and that I'm not, although I would probably pick tasks and um, positions and posts that actually suit me better with my skills, that I'm not discriminated against or um, held back because of my eyesight. And nobody kind of says, well, you won't be able to do that job or that, that, that bit of, of work is closed off for you because you can't do it. It'd be more, you know, it's all open to me kind of thing. So that's really encouraging. What a fabulous moment. Bronze for Jade Etherington and her guide, Caroline Powell, and the gold medal. In November 2009, so my career break's coming up. It's, it's nearly done now. <laughs> I never thought I'd be off work for five years, but yeah, it's been really, really good because since then I've competed full time and um, we've really progressed. Whereas guiding in the UK, when you, when you were a racer and, and you skied with a guide, it was thought of as someone who was a carer, you know, just someone who went out with a blind person. And now, you know, UK Sport, our, which is a government backed uh, sport development agency, is recognizing the guide as a fellow athlete and somebody who needs to be of athletic, of an athletic standard. You know, Charlotte, the girl that, I get, that guides me, um, is an ex-ski racer herself and is still racing it, you know, with me at 23s. My hopes and dreams for us all as a, you know, as, as humans, as a society, is that we stop seeing things as, like, negative, as, like, that there are parts of albinism that really need to be looked at, so we really need to help take care of, you know, if someone has a lack of melanin in their skin, there's dangers toward the sun, because the sun isn't going anywhere, <laughs> you know, we need to protect that. So that's definitely something that I would, 
I would be encouraging everyone to do is to find a way to protect their skin and not be vulnerable to different types of cancers. Mm -hmm.